These funny looking things are called picaroons. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest in the 60s and 70s and 80s in a lumbering and logging family and they were ubiquitous. They were everywhere and in the last five minutes walking around my shop I picked up these samples that are all relics of days gone by in the Wadsworth family when the Pacific Northwest was all about lumbering. If you ever have to move a piece of wood, you may not have known it, but the picaroon would have helped you. These things are designed specifically to extend your reach, enable you to stick a prong into a piece of wood and pull it towards you. That's it. But in the lumber business, which includes firewood and carpentry, sometimes you have to be able to grab a piece of wood and pull it towards you. So I'm not just going to sit here and talk to you about these tools because I got a little project. We're prepping for a, for a storage container that we're going to move in. And so I've got a project moving some chunks of wood and I had to look around to find the right picaroon. And so I'm going to clean one of these up, show it a little love and a little respect. Maybe I'll clean a couple of them up and you'll be able to see why if you've got to move wood, even just lumber and beams, it just cuts out a lot of the difficulty and the, frankly, exposure. I'm not going to get slivers in my hands. I'm not going to grab a hold of a black widow on the bottom of one of these beams that's been hiding out in a dry spot for a while. It's easier on the back and you get more work done in the same period of time. So let me clean one or two of these up just kind of out of respect and uh, we'll go out and move a little bit of wood. A picaroon is primarily useful when the whole job is moving the wood. Now on most construction sites, of course you're picking up wood regularly and moving it around, but you're also installing it in an exact location or moving it in and out of a saw or onto sawhorses or in place and usually, you know, in that sort of a setting, a picaroon can just sort of get in the way a little bit. And besides that, you know, in a, most construction situations, the marks and the holes that a picaroon leaves could be a problem, you know, possibly. But if you're just moving wood, I mean, even big chunks of wood, beams, logs, chunks, ends, from point A to point B, it can be a real lifesaver. It'll keep an old man working a little longer. There's a lot of things about this tool that I like, and one of them is its humble effectiveness. A picaroon is not loved by anyone. It's not collectible, it's not handsome, they're never well maintained. They're just sitting there in the corner of the shop leaning up against a wood pile ready to make your day easier and never require any special attention. I mean, even this thing, the bottom half of the handle is split off and it would give you a nasty sliver, but for some period of time, if you were careful, you could use that tool in the same way you used it the day it was brought home from Ace Hardware in 1962. Okay, it would still work if you were careful. Now you can't do that with an ax. You got a handle like this on an ax, you got to repair it right away. What about the fact that you can go through hundreds of picaroons and never find a logo stamped on the side of that? These are not a fashion tool or a designer tool or even a collectible tool. They're just a working tool. And I remember with fondness that whether we were cutting firewood or dad was working for Roseburg Lumber, or when he had a trucking company hauling peeler core, there was always a picaroon on every truck leaning up in every corner because of the labor and the time that it saved in being able to reach out, stick it in a piece of wood, and move the wood. So I haven't used a picaroon this much in 20 years. Heck, maybe, maybe 23 or 24 years. But it only took about a minute and a half before I remembered, number one, what an advantage they are and how much they can save your back. I mean, think of it, I just moved, I don't know, maybe 1,200 pounds of wet, soggy old lumber and my back feels great. 
And the other thing I remembered is why the grind on the tip of the picaroon is important. I started out using this one because the head is tighter. Pretty snug. You know, the other one, this other one was pretty loose, so I started with this. And I glanced down and I thought, huh, pointy end, okay. When I switched over to this one, which is one that my dad had been using last when he was hauling peeler core, it's just kind of a rolling flat grind. It comes to a sharp edge, but the width remains the same right to the end. So it's just kind of a two-sided, slightly bird-beaked, hawk-beaked edge. And it can be sharp, and it goes in kind of hard. You've got to hit it, but then you've got the full weight of the material to pull against, and you're not slicing out as you're pulling it towards you. There's a reason that these things are bent, and there's a reason that the good ones are flat. And I remembered that right off the bat. But I also remembered that there comes a point, sort of a law of diminishing returns, where a loose head is okay, but when it gets loose enough that you start being in danger of rolling it around the end of the axe handle, well, that's no good for sure. So this one is on its last legs. If I had this picaroon head on this handle that tight, that would be an ideal tool. Now, there's another thing that is, uh, I don't know, maybe it's obvious. This is a single bit axe handle. So is this, with the recurve at the end and the little swelled up bulb at the end so you know when you're to the end of the handle. And that's great, but it's really important on a picaroon because most of the effort and the effort that it is saving you is moving the piece horizontally. And so if it just came to a smooth end without a taper, I mean, you just couldn't squeeze your hand hard enough all day to do that. But when the handle swells up, you have something to butt your grip up against and it really saves your forearm. This little beauty, which is probably the pick of the litter, just illustrates all these things so beautifully. This must have been made for a carpenter shop application. I don't know, maybe a, a chair factory or something where somebody is pulling small pieces, maybe off a conveyor belt or something. It's actually been split and hand forged and the handle was handmade because there are two little laminations on the side to make that bulb really big. I mean, if you're squeezing your hand at all, you're just not coming off the end of that. So the upshot is the old timers had to work hard, but they knew how to make the tools that made their work efficient. And if you're moving much wood at all in any sort of a dimension or any sort of a shape that's on the ground, I, unless you like to bend over and pick things up, you really ought to think about getting your hands on a picaroon. In the Pacific Northwest, logging, which is taking the material off of the ground into a manufacturing process, and lumbering, milling, peeling, chipping, everything that goes along with turning the wood into usable products for, for our well-being, is pretty much mechanized. We don't, we don't move the tons of wood by hand that we used to. But there still are odd pieces. There are still moments where men are sorting these things on conveyor belts. There's the incessant cleanup where there are chunks and pieces and bark and branches that have to be moved. And so we're still tripping on these things around here and probably will be for a good long time. So if you ever see one at a garage sale or an estate sale or an auction somewhere and you don't have one of these funny looking hawk's beak things, pick it up, put that chisel grind on the end, lean it up in the corner of the shop because someday you're just going to have to move some wood and this is the tool that will help you do it. Now circling back around to the point about the tip on a picaroon and specifically the different tips on these two picaroons, I remember now today using these things my dad talking about this and showing me what made a good tip on a picaroon when I was a kid. Now like most kids at the time I didn't give it much thought because I wasn't all that pleased to be using that picaroon and probably was looking for a way to get out of there sooner if I could, but using these two back to back like this really brought that back into focus for me. A picaroon needs a chisel tip, maybe even with a little extra hook at the end to operate properly. Dad used one of these as his primary hand tool for a lot of years, and he was a true believer in the power of a picaroon. So if you're new to the channel, thanks. Thanks for watching this, and stick around. Check out the comments, post something, because there's a lot of people in this, little, in this little Essential Craftsman YouTube community who know a lot more about any particular subject that you want to mention than I do. And by their comments, you can learn a lot of things and sort of move forward in your interest in these old tools and old methods and productivity and craftsmanship. We've got a good bunch of people here that have a lot of important things to say, and you're probably one. So take a second, leave a comment, and thanks for watching.